We say we are believers. We have accepted Jesus Christ as our personal savior. We believe him. You know, you know, anytime they tell you Christianity is not a religion, it's a religion because religion has done more harm than the devil. So Christianity is a personal relationship with Jehovah God. You know, but we have become so familiar with God that nothing works. Hallelujah. And so it seems that the more familiar people are with someone, the harder it is for them to accept the person as an authority of any kind. It is very hard. Hallelujah. Can we please be on our feet as we read our scripture? Matthew 13, I believe, from 53 to 58. From the New King James. Now it came to pass when Jesus had finished these parables that he departed from there. When he had come to his own country, he taught them in their synagogue so that they were astonished and said, Where did this man get this wisdom and this mighty works? Is this not the carpenter's son? <laughs> Is not his mother called Mary and his brothers James, Simon, and Judas? And he goes on, and his sisters, are they not all with us? When then did this man get all these things? So they were offended at him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor, except in his own country and his own house. Now he did not do many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Father, we thank you and we bless you for today. These are your people that you have gathered unto yourself. I pray that hearts will be receptive to receive your word today. That no one will live here the same. Father, I pray that you use me to bless your people. So that the glory will be yours and yours alone. Have your way with us. In Jesus' name, we have prayed with thanksgiving and essential. Say, Amen. I am speaking under the topic the danger of familiarity. So let's get a working definition familiarity, the state of knowing something very well, having a close acquaintance with or knowledge of knowing someone so well that. You lose your admiration and respect for them. Amen. Now, if you look at the scripture, I mean, why were, why were the people so detailed? Why? And their sisters are with us. Is it not the son of Mary? Is it not the carpenters? You see, they have been with Jesus for that long that they know him through and through. It's like knowing your husband knowing your wife, your children knowing you, and you know that sort of thing. And so, Jesus, the miracle worker, the anointed one, walks into his own country, in his own hometown. And the thing his people could think of was the carpenter's son, Mary's son, his brother's names, and then his sisters are even with us here. We will say that, oh, in those days, yes, but what about now? We say we are believers. We have accepted Jesus Christ as our personal savior. We believe him. You know, you know anytime they tell you Christianity is not a religion, it's a religion because religion has done more harm than the devil. So Christianity is a personal relationship with Jehovah God. You know, but we have become so familiar with God that nothing works. Hallelujah. And so it seems that the more familiar people are with someone, the harder it is for them to accept the person as an authority of any kind. It is very hard. It is very hard. Amen. So let's go to my first point. Familiarity hinders or limits full reception of the anointing. Your reception of the blessing is based on how you receive your man of God. If you receive him a man, you receive of a man. So right now, hey, 
Many people are so familiar with Pastor King. You see him just as a man. But don't see him as a man. See him as a man of God. And if you are looking at him, look at the God that in is in the man. Amen. If you are dealing with him, deal with him as the God in the man. Shepherds are not sheep. And so when Jehovah God says, I'll give you shepherds after my own heart, who will feed you with knowledge and understanding? He knew what he was saying. We don't serve a confused God. Jesus was God. He went to his own hometown. Now look at the, ah, is this not the man who could turn water into wine? Is this not the same man? Is this not the same man who anoints his prophet that they do miracles? Is this not the same man who raises the dead? Is this not the man Jesus? Is this not the same Jesus who multiplies loaves of, of bread and fishes? Is this not the same Jesus? The working miracle. He walks into his own hometown. And Bible says he could, do, he could not do many miracles because of unbelief. Now we are here. We sat under the man of God. Some of us are even turning to Methuselah. But nothing is happening. Amen. Is it because of the spirit of familiarity has just crept in? That is all. You don't hate anybody, nobody hates you. The spirit of familiarity has just crept in. And so you just see him as, a, as an ordinary man, which is dangerous. Amen. I believe that when Jesus went in his hometown, they were crippled, they were, you know, lame, and there were people that could not see the blind, and what, you know, so, what is this coming to do here? Amen. What is this carpenter's son coming to do here? And so, Bible says, he did not do many mighty works there because of their unbelief. And it is happening to us. Number two, familiarity with God causes you to lose reverence for holy things. John 2.16. And he said to those who sold those, take these things that we do not make my father's house a house of merchandise. Now let me read from the 15. When he had made a whip, of course, he whipped them. He drove them all out of the temple with the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changes, money, and overturned them. Jesus Christ was, you know, all over the place. They have turned the house of God into a marketplace. They were selling the wadawa and all those animals and the, the house of God. Because they were familiar. And so they did not respect anything. No honor. I wouldn't be surprised some people were even will come in the front of the house, they will be there. Amen. Because if you turn into a marketplace, what else again? So Jesus himself had to come and drive them away. And it is happening to us now. There are people who wouldn't go to some places? Why? Because familiarity has crept in. And therefore, when he or she goes there, the dishonor. See, those, those of us from, I don't know, those of us from Africa, you see the, our high school platform and others. There are some people who are not on it. Some people, some, some money people, some pastors, they are not on the platform. It's not that they don't want to be there. But because they knew them from school, one or two things, and now God has saved them. Because they don't want any designer, so they are staying in their own corner. Jesus rebuked the people who turned the house of God into a marketplace. Because from familiarity, we can't even honor God. When they say we should bring the tithe, questions. Psalm 121, right? My help comes from the Lord. So your help doesn't come from yourself. It comes from the Lord. Amen. Somebody helped you. Somebody is helping you. And his name is Jehovah God. Right? And then if it's time for you to honor Jehovah God, that is why you want Q&A. We think we are wise. We want Q&A. And it's a New Testament thing. And it's a... Then we go on social media. Then you, are, you are a baby. Honoring God with our substance. Tithes and offering, familiarity hardens your heart. Familiarity, it hardens your heart. That is why, you know, when the man of God says something, we always will criticize it. 
because you are too familiar. And then all the pastors now they are local boys. When you mention when you mention the name, oh please. When did he come? I haven't, I haven't got into family yet. I'm just staring the waters. I have a cousin. I grew up with her. She lives in New York. Pastor Kim even knows her. I call her my sister. Because we grew up together and that's all. she knows me through and through. When I became born again, then she called me. She said, Brother, I have accepted your ministry. I know God has called you. From that day, he hasn't called me prince. He calls me papa. And do you know something? There is nothing, Bishop, that I go to God on her behalf and God doesn't do it. Nothing. 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 Because she, she got the revelation that if he doesn't put that familiarity away, she can never benefit from my grace. They're going to make her a queen mother. The panel called her. They said, you are a royal. So we want to give you some lands and then they said, you take over. You know what he told the panel? He said, wait, let me go and talk to my papa. Then as soon as he started asking her, who are you going to talk to? He said, I'm going to talk to Uncle Prince. Then she called me. I said, give me seven days. The people were saying, oh, we are waiting for you. He said, until my father speaks. No action. What am I saying? He respects the grace. And so, and I'm saying, there's nothing. If he's sick, the first person to call is me. Anything that he's going through. It is the profanity of treating divine things with casual, apathetic, flippant attitude. We profane holy things by making them common, ordinary, casual, mundane, and routine because of familiarity. Jesus went to his home. Instead of, if, instead of, instead of, oh, Rabbi, I need prayer. They were, they were telling him who he was. He knew he had brothers. He knew he was the son of carpenter. Do you have to tell him? Do you have to tell him? I know my father's name. I know the work he does. But because they were too familiar with him, the anointing, the great Christ was there. And they couldn't benefit. That is, that is too dangerous. Amen. Familiarity leads to dishonor. The more you know someone and have daily access to their private lives, their physical, the more you may be tempted to despise them, to belittle them, to think lowly of them. It will be near impossible to honor them. It will be near impossible. When familiarity takes over our hearts and minds, we can become blind to what's right in front of us. Hallelujah. Second Samuel. 6.14. He said, Then David danced before the Lord with all his might, and David was wearing a linen effort. You know, David had gone to bring the ark from Obededom's house. And so when he was coming, David the king. I'm not talking about David the father. I'm not talking about David the brother. I'm not talking about David the gentleman. I'm not talking about David the musician. I'm talking about David the king. And so, Opana was giving some moves. Happy! Because he was bringing the ark, which symbolizes the presence of Almighty God, into the city of David. Ah, a hawking of his right. He was dancing before the king of kings. And mere mortal human being, calling herself a wife. But, you see, if there is no king, there will be no queen. That's what many people forget. Go and ask Vasti. Amen. So David danced. Then when everything has been done, and when we come to the verse 20, Bible says, then David returned to bless his household. And Michal, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, how glorious was the king of Israel today, uncovering himself today in the eyes of the maids of his servants, as one of the fellows shamelessly uncovers himself. Oh, my God. My God. Are you taking the king? Have you forgotten he's the king of Israel? When familiarity creeps in, 
don't respect anybody. You belittle things. You despise things. Amen. You despise things. In my country, there is a tribe, right, that have decided to honor their king. Wherever the man goes, he has a whole contingent following him. The other time he went to the city, he was going to meet one of the chiefs. And in the morning, all the millionaires in the city from his, 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 his place has brought their cars out. Nobody invited them because their king is coming. They were, I'm talking about millionaires waiting for the king. What the honor? Waiting for him. Go and look at the cars there. You will know that these are, these are bourgeois. We're not talking about coins. We're talking about money. But because they honor the man, anywhere he goes, when the man speaks, it's law. Then you know what? Some people from our country, they are mad. They are too known. They are, I'm afraid, keep quiet. You your, you your own. When he's traveling and he, even he invites you, you don't come. Somebody is honoring his own. What is your problem? What is your problem? It is a dangerous spirit. Because we are, fam we are familiar with our own. They, they are not familiar with their own. If, the, if their king says today, five o'clock, everybody should sleep. They don't ask questions. They honor it. If we decide that we will honor Pastor King anyhow we want, nobody can come and ask us anything. We have decided. He did not ask for it. We have decided. Because let me tell you, Anna has benefits. There are mysteries in Anna. Hallelujah. Anna. People have been around royalty and they despise royalty. Let me give you a story. Let me give you some history. It will shock you. Do you know Queen Elizabeth? Who ruled for 70 years? was never meant to be the Queen of England. Never. Queen Elizabeth of England, who ruled for 70 years, was never meant to be the Queen of England. His father, King George VI, was the second born of their father, King George V. His first born was Edward VIII. And if you know anything about monarchy, the first born is the heir. So when father died in 1936, I'm talking about King George V, that is Queen Elizabeth's grandfather. Edward VIII ascended to the throne. That was his first son. The problem was with Edward was, was he was in love with an American socialite called Simpson Wallace. Wallace Simpson in the early 1930s. So the time his father died, the love was love and it was burning like fire. Love and warm. Amen. The, the love was serious. And then Wallace divorced. And then Edward wants to marry Wallace. Now he could not. Because the Church of England did not allow divorces whose exes were still living. And Edward knew it was going to cause constitutional crisis. The monarchy said no. The establishment said no. So on December 10th, 1936, he went on BBC and announced to the world, to be with the love of my life, I abdicate the throne. Now, at first, I thought it was the power of a woman. It can be. But the woman did not make any decision. Simpson Wallace did not make any decision. Somebody said, fear woman. We fear human being, not woman alone. Men can do worse. So, he abdicates the throne. What was he thinking? What was Edward Yes? What was he thinking? Familiarity. Did he see his father as a king or he just saw him as a father? Because if he saw him as a king, he will not make this decision. But he saw him as a father. Like the way people see us. Pastors, ministers, oh, go and tell your father you will eat. Go and tell your father he has to go to the school conference. Go and tell your father he has to take you to hospital. Go and tell your father this. Go and tell your father this. Go and... Never, will, never will, will they say, go and tell the pastor. And so we can't even pray for our family. Because familiarity has crept in. Because they don't, they don't see you as a man of God. So, Edward abdicates the throne. And then, who is the next in line? George V, which is Queen Elizabeth's father. 
automatic. Because his senior brother said, I don't want it. Then he died. The first child is Queen Elizabeth. She was never meant to rule England. Now she dies. Guess what? King Charles. Now if Charles dies, guess what? One decision, because of familiarity, turned the whole lineage. One decision. Because he was familiar, too familiar with royalty. We are too familiar with God. Too familiar with the man of God. Nothing is happening. Hallelujah. But today something will change you. Israel had become so familiar with the presence of God on the journey that some of them had no reverence for God and respect for his servant Moses. In God's own words, how long will the, will the people treat me with contempt? The message, the message Bible says, how would they treat me with death? Hallelujah. You see, God is a wise God. That is why, even in the family, because of our assignments, we have the head, we have the nursing command, we have everything. But because familiarity has crept in, if the man says anything, it doesn't work. And the children too, because they see, they just see him as a father. Right? If he gives any instructions, it doesn't work. And f- familiarity has killed our homes. It is, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you won't say amen, but that's the truth. Amen. It has killed our home. And if care is not taken, it will continue to be killing our. Amen. Israel had the same problem. They had the same problem. And so, you know, they were so familiar with the presence because, you know, during the, during the day, a pillar of cloud, during the night, a pillar of fire, you know, and that sort of thing. And so, anytime they see it, so, my, my friend, this is normal. No, it is not. It is not. Hallelujah. It is not. And so, let us know that it is about God. And so, when God says this, I've, I've given you a shepherd. After my, do, you know, do you know why most of us do the things that we do? Bishop, I think Jesus Christ has not been revealed unto us. We don't have the revelation of Jesus Christ. So, many of us, we think we are saved, but we are not. Amen. Because if Jesus has been revealed to you, you will do things differently. How to keep the fog of familiarity from sabotaging your life. As you sit here and as you're watching me, ask yourself, ask yourself, where am I? Because many of us think it's so normal, so we don't even care, you know. It should, it should, go, it should go its way. But ask yourself, am I being driven by that spirit of familiarity? Look into your homes. Mom, dad, children, aunties, I mean, you, you might even have a classmate who has a position, right? But you so despise him. That, uh, uh, who is he? Even when we were in school, I was better than him or her. No. It is familiarity. So you don't respect anybody. You don't honor anybody because you know them. When we were young, we were, we were bathing uh, on the streets. Uh, you know, so the people that you bath with, both boys and girls, now you've grown, you say you are a pastor. Oh, my friend, go and sit down. Hallelujah. So ask yourself, where am I? Because, you know, the danger light is flashing. Flashing on your face. Renew your mind with the word of God. Romans 12, 2. Renew your mind with the word of God. Spend time with God in prayer. Because Jeremiah 33, 3 says that, call upon me in the time of trouble, and I will show you mighty things that you don't know. There are don't know. There are mysteries in Anna. Because if we don't change our mind, we are in for a rude awakening. There were three frogs who were sitting on a mountain. A boy asked his father. And then one decided to jump. How many frogs are left? The father said two. He said no. The frog decided. He didn't jump. So my next line is, decide and act on it. Alone won't take you to anywhere. Act on it. Amen. 
you decide that, you know, this familiarity thing is going to go away. You know, I'm going to honor my wife. I'm going to honor my husband. I'm going to honor my children and the children. You know, there was a time, there was a time in a family and, you know, the woman was talking in a way to the father. And that one of the children said, Mom, you don't have to talk to daddy that way. Said, no, go and sit down. When did you know anything? And, and you know, our kids become so fearful that they can't say anything again. But I expect that any child that is above 21, you have some wisdom. And so, if, if you see that something is going on between mom and dad openly, if they show you to you, maybe you can call dad and say, dad, the way you talk to mom, it wasn't right. Please. Or if mom, you can call mom, later you go to mom and say, mom, the way you talk to dad, it wasn't. But they, look, they, they, they don't say anything. No. Because either they are in their mom's corner or they are in their dad's corner. Amen. But there's one thing that you, listen, the young shall grow. The young shall grow. Do not be deceived. God is not more for whatever a man sow, so shall he reap. Galatians 6, 7. 90 verse 12. The Bible says, So teach us to number our days so that we may gain a heart of wisdom. We need it to navigate these seas of life. Amen. May God teach us number our days so that we gain a heart of wisdom. Amen. Because of familiarity, there is fire in homes. <laughs> fire is burning. It's like Iraq or uh, Ukraine. Because there are homes when you get there, you see this honor written all over the walls. But it is so. They did it in Jesus' time. It did not help. And so we must learn from it so that it helps us in this our journey of life. May God add his blessing to the word that we have heard. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Hallelujah. My friends, I pray that today's broadcast has been a blessing to you to empower you to live a life of impact. If this content has blessed you and helped you, if this content is adding value to your life, I only ask one thing of you. I want you to share it with someone else. Our mission is to help as many people as possible, and we can't do that without your help. It means the world to me that you share it. God has a life of impact for you. Keep on making impact. I'm out of time. I've got to leave you now, but you can also connect with us on Facebook Instagram, and on our website. I will see you next time. Until then, continue impacting your generation. Shalom.